Hi, Dante, dear. We're here with my friend Mahalo. So he's been doing channeling sessions with me and knowing me now for four years. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it's been a miracle. It's been a great journey. We, we did a little interview a couple of years ago, and I just met you for the first time, and things were good. Now you've come to Italy. We're in Reggio Emilia at the moment, and you've met my family. And for me, it's a miracle, because not only am I happy, I mean almost continually, but my family is doing well. So everything is really like amazing. We are all happy now and it's quite something. It's really good. I mean, you've seen it too, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. And, and coincidences happen, you know, finding parking spaces, these kind of things. It's, the flow is good. What do you think was the biggest thing, the biggest breakthrough that happened through all of this time that, like what made it start flowing? Well, that time I came to Mexico and I met you, and then just before we made the last video, I had a huge, uh, I don't know what to say. I mean, something really amazing happened there. And I, I was blissfully happy 24 hours a day for about three months. They did warn me this is not gonna be easy in the real world because where we met was kind of a beach resort and we were away from normal reality just in a kind of you know that that beach resort that's just happy and away from normal life and normal people and all their troubles so yeah there were moments when I got back and gradually I learned to stabilize and be just able to get back on my feet when I fell off my horse as it were <laughs> so yeah I mean the so the change happened then that when we did that last video the change was already there yeah that was it. Yeah. Uh, we started podcasts together just for fun, just asking sort of random questions and, and interesting questions and seeing what crops up. And I've had amazing answers. I mean, the, the, that has triggered many little things. And something more recently, another big step was when I said, so what do you guys do for fun? I've seen the Pleiadians, apparently they're ETs. <laughs> I don't know, apparently they're your future um, reincarnations. And we say, so what do you do for fun? And they say, everything's fun, everything's fun. Every moment is fun. And it's like, wow, that is different from how we are. And so I asked them another time, so you're here to teach us that, that every moment is fun. And that made me realize that I want that. I want every moment to be fun. I want, I want to feel really good, you know, about like the neighbor makes a problem. Though obviously things still come up, you just have learned to deal with them in a different way or have a different perspective on them. What were yeah, you saying? Yeah, I mean, you, you've noticed that because, you yeah. know, things happen like traffic jams and people messing you about. I'm not immediately able to put it behind me but fairly quickly, I can put it into balance. Yeah. And also, I mean, I've had a neighbor being very annoying, but I very quickly found ways to feel um, empathy for him and whatever he's been through, that that pettiness is all he can find to brighten his day. <laughs> I mean, like, wow, that's, that's not really living. If it's being sort of a, a, a noxious person is the best you can do to have a bit of sunlight in your day then gosh uh, so uh, I feel how can I support him as a, as a neighbor and as as Basha you know when, when people talk to Basha he says how exciting you know it's just how exciting I have a little problem <laughs> how am I gonna solve it what what exciting thing I'm gonna find and yeah that's a more recent change where I feel the challenges uh, how can I make this exciting? How can I make this moment be fun, which wasn't naturally going to be fun how I looked at it before? Yeah. So that, that's a more recent change in this last year where I've found ways to apply it. And, and yeah, it's lifted me up even more, I think. I'm, what I'm more... keeps it fun? How do you keep it fun? For me, it's um, the area around my heart. Um, and like I say to my daughter, put sparkle there. She often gets grumpy about things. So I say, just put the sparkle there. 
Um, so that area is where I'm checking all the time. I'm not considering the thinking stuff that used to be there bothering me for decades. I just check in the heart part of me. Am I connected? Am I feeling um, beyond this world, I would say? I would say something, uh, a kind of connection. People say connection to, to God, but I'm, I'm checking a kind of sparkling, a kind of magical feeling. Um, and now is now. There's only now. Every now moment is now. And, and the nowness of, of checking how, how I'm feeling and in that area. And the, the thoughts are just, you know, observation. I can let go of the thoughts. I don't mind. Here. The heart's the center of everything. And so where our connection to the higher mind, the great spirit, to mm -hmm. our soul is. And when we live from that place, it's like everything comes together through that connection. When we foster what creates our own unique way of feeling that connection there in the heart, it all comes together. Yeah. But it's a matter of keeping that awareness there all the time so that we always act from it, we always speak from it, we always feel it. Yeah. Yeah. And I was, I was very shocked because a couple of times I tried to... I try to devise ways to share all this and bring everybody else and have other people in my life who were this kind of joyfulness. Um, well, you already said that your family is so much... My family is, yeah, my family is, and it started so with my doing... teenager, who's not, not here. You haven't, you haven't physically met my teenager, have you? Chatted I to... talked with him. But you haven't, you haven't met him in the... No, in, yeah. But yet. the thing is, at 13, he's now 17, but he became happy. And that's really guided me because he's nothing to do with, you know, consulting you and the, the you know, apparently there's Palladians, you know, it's nothing to do with that. He's just happy. But you encouraged him to follow his passion? Yes, I was very clear. And I mean, as, as the, whoever it is we're talking to, Palladians, as they've, they've pointed out many times, I've done a lot in my lifetime. I mean, I started with TM meditation at 17 and, and yoga meditation. yeah and then est i did est and i've done many many things What's i did that? nlp est was an Earhart seminar training it was huge but in the night in 1980 or so so they have some contact it was enlightenment plus vat okay it, it was the first personal growth course and and i did that and it was very good and i got enlightened in the first you know weekend you get enlightened in the weekend you pay vat on it okay it was it was crazy, but est. And then there's been loads of loads and loads of these these personal growth courses, and I've done a lot of those things. I've done NLP. I trained with John Grinder. Neuro linguistic programming. programming. Yeah, I was very fascinated with that. I got very deeply into that. And human design. I got very deeply into that. And well, who who was you know very much ignore your mind, ignore your mind. Just you got to feel a different part of your body. And, and with him, it was the the guts and mm -hmm. and now it's more the heart. Um, but I've had decades of let's not bother with this mind, which, you know, I mean, to Cambridge, I've got a great mind, you know, and that was a big distraction. That was a big distraction. Mm. Yet, I was always fascinated with spirituality because, I mean, my, both my parents were deeply affected in World War II. They both were in active service, and my mum became an atheist from what she saw, and my dad so the less um, convinced as an atheist. That gave me an, an interest in spirituality. Yeah. All my life. On the spaceship of Babel, we are gliding through the stars on a 5 year mission beyond Jupiter and Mars. Behind me as we try to disembark here, everyone can know me as we whisper in the dark. <laughs>